Greetings and welcome to another episode of Eric the Car Guy. That would be me. Today we're going to talk about mufflers. In particular, this 90 Integra. Happened to be my brother's car and he was driving along and this happened. This won't help him. We are going to replace that with a new unit. And really what this is going to be a discussion about more than anything else is how to use a torch or as it's sometimes called, the big red wrench. Whenever something's rusty or won't come loose, that's your best friend in the world. Heat expands metal and allows it to move in ways that it would not normally move at room temperature. Be very careful. These are temperatures that are extremely flipping hot. In other words, you could burn the living snot out of yourself. So if you're gonna use this information, use it wisely and use it only for the forces of good. If not, you might get hurt, and I would hate it if you got hurt. So if you're timid about this, eh. And maybe if you're gonna be using torches for the first time, instead of trying it for the first time underneath a car while you're laying there and there's hot flecks of rust that are flying off and hitting you in the face and arm and everywhere else, causing little tiny bee stings all over you, you might wanna try it like outside of a car situation with something that's off the car and find something old and rusty out someplace in a safe location where you're not going to catch the house on fire or anything like that and give the torches a try there just to see how they work so that you know what you're getting into when you climb under something and have to work in an awkward position. I guess it goes without saying that the first thing to do is jack the car up and put it on jack stands. Chuck the front wheels by the way. This is what's left of our muffler right here, and it ends right there by the gas tank. Now those are the fasteners that we gotta heat up. You're gonna need to save this rubber thing right here. Let me show you a little trick. If you wanna make it easier to get these little rubber things off, a little bit of penetrating oil. That's all you gotta do. Just a wee bit, not a lot, just a little. And they will slide right off. I'm gonna leave it there for now, so I can do my bolts. Personally, this job is a lot easier if you remove the right rear wheel. See why? It's all right there. Right, this is the part where we talk about using the torches themselves. These are the tanks. Green is oxygen, this one is acetylene. Sometimes this tank is black. These are the valves that you open up. This guy is actually a lever right down there. This is the outlet pressure. This is the pressure inside the tank. Same for the oxygen, outlet pressure inside the tank. Now, you adjust the outlet pressure using this regulator. And for oxygen, normally you want it right around 20. For the acetylene, you want it, actually, it'd be nicer if it was closer to five, but 10's okay. But anywhere between five and 10 would be good. These are the numbers that I've used and it seems to work fine. Once again, the pressure is increased and decreased by turning this knob. And if you want it to go down, you actually have to crack it open a little bit. That actually looks a little better. And by I say crack it open, I mean crack it open here and bleed it off. Once you've got your pressure set, the next step is to make yourself a flame. Do I have to even mention it? Do I? These are actually not only to protect your eyes from debris, also to shield you from uh, how intense this light can be, because it actually can, like, you know, when you look at the sun and you make, you got those little spots in your eyes. Uh, it's a little more important with arc welding, but even with an acetylene torch, it can cause temporary blindness. You got two knobs on your torch. The green, oxygen. The red, acetylene. Think of the red as the fire, and the oxygen is the accelerant. Whenever you oxygenate a flame, it goes into like turbocharged hyperdriveness. This is the flame that I like to make. I'm gonna show you out here and then I'm gonna use it under the car because really this is the heart and soul of this video. What I do is I start with acetylene, that would be the red one. I start with acetylene and crack it open a little bit. You can kind of hear it. Then I use this little flint piece here. This makes a, a nice little, it's just like your cigarette lighter. Same flipping thing, a little piece of flint in there. Across the rough surface, you get a spark. Then you get like the initial flame. Come on. And I started out about there. After that, I add the oxygen slowly. A little more acetylene. 
This is about the flame that I like. It's nice and blue, which means it's nice and hot. But that's basically the flame that I'm looking for if I'm heating something up. Cutting is something... Whoa! Hey. Don't panic. That's the main thing with this. Do not panic. You saw a little bit of... Well, actually, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a little bit of flame that came out in here. And probably what that means is my tip needs a little bit of cleaning. Uh, which is not a big deal. But also that this connection right here might be a little bit loose. If that happens, all you need to do is turn the valves off Take away its food. Take away fire's food, fire will go out. Take away its oxygen, fire will go out. In this case, we're taking away its food. But Eric, how do I clean the tip? Fancy set of little pickety, thick, pickety things here. They're like little tiny files. You find the appropriate size for the end of your tip. Gets all that carbon and gook that's out of there. That's pretty much all you have to do. It's more of an issue with cutting torches than it is with this heating torch. One more thing for you. Okay, before I start heating, I'm gonna see what size fastener this is so that I'm ready to go to take this off as soon as I'm done heating it. You don't wanna let it sit in the heat for a while, so like, get the tool ready. It may be rusted away so bad that it's not a size anymore, and if you can't get it in metric, see if you can find a, you know, a standard socket that'll work. And if you have to, hammer it on. But have that ready to go uh, so that when you're done heating, all you've got to do is just pretty much uh, knock the fastener out and away you go. Got the right size fastener. I'll be able to make sure that this fits in here. Now, I'm ready to heat. Some of you may have already noticed that this is a gas tank and it's uh, right by what we're gonna be heating. Point the heat in the direction towards the uh, fastener. What you're most worried about with this is catching the undercoating on fire. I'm not really worried about the tank exploding or anything like that. If you get underneath here or underneath any car and you smell gas, that's the most dangerous situation because gas as a liquid is not as volatile as gas in a vapor form. Gas in a vapor form is an explosion waiting to happen. You can actually put a fire out with liquid gas if you can put it on fast enough. So if you smell gas, this is probably not a good idea. But I don't smell any gas, and I don't believe there's any leaks here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed. I don't even have to tell you. Also, as you're heating this up, little pieces of rust and things will come flying off, and uh, they may touch bare parts of your skin. If you can, wear some kind of protective clothing, like I've got a jacket on here and these gloves and all this other kind of stuff. Definitely protect your eyes. But uh, the point is, try not to flinch. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard sometimes. Some of those things are really hot and you have to get rid of them, but that, that's the kind of thing that may get you into trouble. You may hit the wrong knob on the gas and something may happen there, but just, you know, use your head. Realize that you're working with something that is a powerful tool, but can also be very destructive. If stuff gets on your skin, that's going to happen. Just, you know, be a man. Even if you're a woman, be a man. And one more thing. I'm laying on a piece of cardboard but make sure that the cardboard is not like directly underneath here, especially if you're cutting something because big gobs of metal will be coming down and could possibly set your cardboard on fire. So be aware of all of these wonderful things when you're playing with fire, but really enjoy playing with fire because it's one of my favorite things. You'll, this will change your life, trust me. And you heat what it goes through. You heat what the bolt is going into. You don't heat the bolt itself. You heat what it goes through. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to open it up and expand it. Cool, huh? Don't touch it. It's really hot. Make sure it heats up till it's red. These glasses are also good for that. So when it gets to a point where it's the right temperature, color is actually in direct proportion to temperature. And uh, in this case, when you see 
red in these glasses, it's ready to go. Now let's get this hunk of junk off here and get the new one on. This was the fun part. When you're done using your torches, make sure you turn them off at the tanks. This will prevent any of the gas from leaking out, and it will leak out past those valves. Good set of valves or not, it will do precisely that. This little, little torch set that I got here has worked and served me pretty well in my uh, limited use, but if you're cutting, if you're doing lots of this kind of thing, big tanks are the way to go. But this stuff right here is still the same. You just put it on bigger tanks. Now that it's cooled down a little bit, you can take the fasteners out. Bye bye. Don't forget to take your little rubber thing because you'll you'll need it later. See ya. This is the part where I try to decide whether I'm going to reuse the old gasket or start with a new one. You know what? When a pipe gets this old and rusty, this is the new gasket here. It's got graphite in it, which acts like a lubricant and basically allows the pipe to wiggle back and forth without making noise. That's pretty much what it does. All right, now, to get this old one off, what you're gonna need to do is, is pry it off. I'm just afraid in the process of prying this one off that this rusty pipe, which probably isn't long for this world, but once again, it's my brother's car. This rusty pipe here uh, may end up going away with this gasket and I'll have nothing to put this new gasket on. So I'm actually just gonna leave this gasket alone. Since it seems fairly well intact, and uh, just put the pipes on from there. My new muffler comes in three pieces. This is a cheap muffler. It's, it'll work just fine, but it won't last as long as the good muffler kits, which are all one piece, which is similar to the original equipment. This will work just fine, but you're gonna have to put these pieces together. You're also gonna need some of these clamps. This spring bolt kit, I don't know if it's gonna work or not for what I have, just because it, uh, it didn't have spring bolts on it to begin with, so it might not work, but we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. Now I'm gonna build this one piece at a time, and I'm gonna start by threading the pipe up over the suspension to get it down to here. Onto, this is referred to as the B pipe, and then this is referred to as the muffler on Hondas. So I'm just gonna get that basically lined up and I'm just gonna put my bolts in, but I'm not gonna tighten them. I'm gonna see if these spring bolts are gonna work out or not. If they don't, no big deal. First I'll see if they'll thread into the old holes. And they won't, so they won't work. So I have to find a set of fasteners. Now, I could return this spring bolt kit for some money, but honestly I won't because you never know when you're gonna need these. Um, if it's just your car, but if you're working on lots of cars, I always keep some of these spring bolts around because they have come in handy. Now I'm gonna do something that some of you are probably gonna scream at me about, leave me nasty comments, but you know what? I might just reuse these old ones. These were hardened anyway. And I held it in place. So rather than trying to go and dig up some other fasteners, I'm just going to reuse these old ones. But I'm going to do one thing before I do. Everything always works better with a little lubrication. It really, really does. So, a little drop. I know this, this isn't oil in here, it's transmission fluid. Uh, just because. No particular reason. Oil works just fine. This next one, a little bit of stuff. Get it started. But I'm not going to tighten it, I'm just going to run it down a little bit. I'm 
Remember our good friend penetrating oil? Our little rubber things. Bring it around. And I'm just mocking this thing into place for the moment. I'm not tightening anything. I'm only getting getting it hung. And then I'm not gonna tighten anything until it's all together. Now comes the part where we gotta put this guy on. All right. Cast into the outside of this thing. There is an arrow that points in both directions. Some mufflers are directional to where you'll have to make sure that it comes out one side or the other. On this particular one, uh, or, or it should be marked somewhere, it should say outlet. This one does not. But I'm gonna take it that this double-sided arrow means stick it up on there, doesn't matter how, just get it up on there. You know what? That little rubber thing is never gonna make it between those two hooks now, is it? Take this out. Flip it around. So you can come up with that way. That looks a little more realistic. Time has come to position our clamps. Now, if my parts guy was good to me, he gave me the correct size clamps because these things come in different sizes. My parts guy was awesome. Thanks, Keith. Repeat on the other side. Ta-da! All right, I'm gonna start by tightening it in sequence from where it connects to the B-pipe all the way back to the outlet. Now it's important when you tighten this that one, the pipe is all the way in, but more importantly that you get the orientation correct because on these three-piece things you know this could go up or down or all over the place as far as its position goes. So you want to make sure there's a position to where it's got some clearance with the underside of the car because I've actually seen these cause noise because they were pushed up against the floor of the vehicle. So you, you don't want it to do that. And you also want it to cleanly exit. So you want to try to position your outlet pipe so that it fits in a good spot on the bumper. And you also want to position the muffler in just the right spot. Now once you've, once you've got that spot, this is where having air tools really helps. You can just start tightening it down. Now it's time to test the fruits of your labor. Quiet. We want to go around the outside, check for leaks. There will be, especially at those joints. Don't worry about it. Also, if you see a little bit of water coming out of a hole in the muffler, totally normal. It's there to drain the water out. If it wasn't there, your muffler would rust worse than it does. As always, you can post questions as text or video responses. Do some video responses, people. Let me see your faces. As always, you can visit me at ericthecarguy.com. I am Eric the Car Guy, and I hope this information was helpful to you. I would like you to use your torches safely and not get hurt, but it is a very powerful tool, so it may open up a whole new world of possibilities for you. Tune in next week for another episode of Eric the Car Guy. Stay dirty.